Hey guys, Chris from Dan's Onical Shop, and today we are doing the Smooth Paint Challenge. Okay, so for this video, we are going to do a Smooth Paint Challenge, and what that kind of means is that we're going to compare each of the popular marine paints that we sell in store to give customers and people watching an idea of how smooth each one is and you know the application process and durability things like that so what we've done is line up a few different things here to start off we've taken a half inch sheet of marine ply plywood uh, we've cut it into equal pieces here so we've got five equal uh, planks we sanded each one of those planks down with 80 grit sandpaper before we apply one coat of each company's primer so for the interlux option using their bright side line we use their Pico Primer. For the Pettit option, we use their Easy Prime. For the Epiphanes option, we use we chose to go with a two-part for this one, using their two-part primer. For all grip, we used their 545 epoxy primer, which is also a two-part, and we did that for these remaining two pieces. So the objective here is we're gonna follow their steps. We're gonna use their products all independent of one another. We are also going to be using the same types of tools for each. So we've ordered these red tree foam brushes and high density foam rollers as kind of like an upgrade option for a roll and tip. Uh, so we are going to use a fresh roller, fresh brush for each piece uh, of these four here. For this last one with the all grip, we are going to switch gears and use a bristle brush and a mohair roller to try something different and see if that gives us different finish. So that's going to kind of be a comparison between these two. So for our next steps, we are going to sand each one of these pieces with uh, 220 grit sandpaper to smooth out the finish. And then we are going to start applying our paints one by one. So the first paint that we started with today was the Interlox Bright Side. It is a single part polyurethane paint. Uh, and we of course used their Pre-Coat Primer before applying the paint. Uh, this one we rolled out with a foam roller and red tree foam brush. We did notice, you know, the initial rolling out, there's a lot of air bubbles. So I think if you're gonna use this paint, you definitely wanna be rolling and tipping so you can get those bubbles out of the surface. Uh, after we tipped them out, most of the bubbles disappeared and the paint seems to be drying to a nice smooth finish. The second paint that we used today was the Pettit Easy Poxy. We of course used their Easy Prime as a start and then applied uh, one coat of the Easy Poxy with their Performance Enhancer on top. Uh, notice this paint, it rolled out pretty similar to the bright side. Uh, not as many air bubbles though and when we tipped it, you know, it did come out to a nice smooth finish. Um, now, after letting it sit for a few minutes, we do not see any of the brush strokes. It seems to have blended together pretty nicely. The third paint that we used today was the Epiphanes Polyurethane, which is a two-part paint. We used their Polyurethane Primer, again a two-part primer. Uh, this one we did notice it rolled out very smooth, uh, really didn't see any air bubbles, you know, a little bit of roller marks, but not much. Once we tipped that, you know, everything went away. Looking at it now, very hard to see where the brush strokes are or anything like that. So we do expect this one to be one of the smoothest paints that we have, just given the nature that it's a two-part paint. Uh, and its price point is you know, kind of substantially higher than the rest. But uh, it, we will see in a day or so once they dry. For this all grip panel, we are mixing up the white top coat with the brushing converter and the brushing reducer per their mixing instructions so that we can prepare the paint to be rolled out. And now we are rolling it out with the Red Tree Foam Roller and the Red Tree Foam Brush we'll use next for tipping. 
Uh, we're trying to go nice and slow so that we don't create excess air bubbles and get a nice even layer of paint applied to our panel. We're also going to roll it out in the opposite direction that we're tipping so that when we're tipping the surface we are going across our previous rolling passes and any kind of brush strokes or rolling marks. So as you can see the paint is going on really smooth. Uh, if you weren't concerned or overly concerned about a smooth finish you really could just roll this paint out and let it blend together on its own without tipping it. Uh, you'd still end up with a really nice coat. It wouldn't be a mirror type finish but it would look really good. As you can see we're getting a little bit of air bubbles but not many. We went pretty slow and now we are tipping in the opposite direction to knock those air bubbles out and blend the surface back together. For this all grip panel we're using a blue top coat um, and instead of the foam roller foam brush application we're going to use the mohair roller and a Americana red tree brush uh, just to try something different see if there's any finished texture differences anything like that. So again, we mixed it up per their specifications, uh, rolled it out using the roller, and then tipped it with the Americana brush. Uh, again, quite a few bubbles when we rolled it out the first time. They all went away as soon as we tipped it, so it looks pretty nice. Uh, it, it is drying with a little bit of dust particles, kind of the same as the other one, which is to be expected given the level of the dust in our building. But uh, so far, it's looking pretty good. No issues in terms of brush strokes remaining or anything like that. So we're going to give it a day to dry and see what it looks like. Okay, so we have painted all of these panels. Uh, we've applied primer and then we did two coats of paint. In between paint coats, we sanded with 400 grit sandpaper. Uh, so they all have cured per the required times. Next, we're going to wet sand each one of them using 1500 grit wet sandpaper to get any kind of dust marks out of them and a little bit of polish. Uh, there's no brush strokes currently, which is great. That's definitely what we wanted. So the wet sanding is just gonna take that dust off, give us a little bit of a shine. Once we've wet sanded, we are going to use a rubbing compound with our buffer, and then we're gonna use a one-step wax on top of that to give it a final gloss. Uh, we'll do the same thing for each one, and then we're gonna kind of compare and contrast, talk about how they finished, what they look like now, and maybe what our recommendations are. Okay, so we have finished buffing and waxing each one of our panels here. So now we're going to kind of go through each one, speak about the products that we used, where they, you know, shine the best or I guess their best applications, and uh, then kind of decide on where we'd use each paint and how we use it. So starting off with the bright side, uh, definitely the easiest to apply. Uh, this is a was only a single part paint. We did not use a brushing thin or anything like that. So we essentially poured it in a tray, rolled it out, tipped it, and let it dry. Um, I definitely thought there was going to be brush strokes inside of this finish, uh, just because of the you know basic nature of the paint. But uh, surprisingly, when rolling and tipping, rolled up and down, tipped side to side, uh, no brush strokes that we can see of. The after the wet sanding and the waxing. Uh, it's definitely smooth to the touch and shiny. You can see some, you know, dimples and things like that and a little bit of distortion in the light. So I would say that uh, in terms of ease of apply, this is great. If you're looking for a shiny finish, but maybe not like a show quality finish, this is definitely a good candidate. It's definitely the most cost effective paint to apply, easiest paint to apply, no surface incamination, no nothing like that. Just kind of roll it on and go. So very happy with this one. Uh, probably great for an inside of a boat, uh, cabin, something like that, uh, because you know it's not going to take much abuse inside of those areas. Uh, but overall, very happy with it. Turned out great. Uh, next up, we have the Pettit. Uh, so this one, we kind of made work like a two-part paint in the sense that we used the 3175 white, their Easy Poxy, and then added the Performance Enhancer to make it flow a little better. 
Again, no brush strokes, so that's great. That's definitely one of our biggest concerns. Looking, you know, the reflections of the light, you can see it a bit clearer there. So uh, you're getting a little bit more depth. You're getting like a nicer, a little bit smoother finish, which you'd expect because you're adding a performance enhancer. You're adding something into the paint. So this is the paint that we used to paint our Chris Craft project boat before. Uh, definitely looks great at the, as a finished product. So uh, a contender for that. You're going to spend probably 30% more than you would on a bright side. So you can kind of factor that into your equation. Uh, very easy to use. Again, we just rolled out the primer, rolled out the paint, tipped the paint. Uh, looks really good. And then did the wet sand and the wax. But overall, you know, very happy. No brush strokes, nothing like that. Our third paint turned out really nice. Uh, this is the Epiphanes two-part paint. So this is a pure two-part. Nice thing about their setup is when they send it in the cans, they send the cans a little bit larger so you can essentially mix it all at once. So it takes that nervousness of mixing it wrong out of the equation, uh, which is usually a concern with two-part paints. It kind of adds to the complexity. So with their finish, you could essentially mix it all at once, put it in the can, stir it, let it set uh, and induct, and then roll it out. Uh, we use their two-part primer, same idea. You can mix it right in the can. Looking at it in the reflection of the light, the much clearer image, much more depth, uh, a lot more reflection. So this would definitely be a contender for the side of a boat, uh, top side, something like that, that you really want to look nice. Even when we rolled this paint out, even without tipping it, we noticed that it blended together pretty quick. There wasn't a lot of air bubbles. So ease of use, you know, pretty high still, even though it's a two-part paint. Uh, but final finish, I mean, very nice, especially after the wet sanding and the waxing there. Uh, so great paint. Again, you're going to spend a little bit more. So, uh, you know, if you're $60 a quart for the bright side, close to 70 for the Easy Poxy, you're, I think, close to like $100 uh, for the Epiphane. So you're spending a little bit more, but depending on that finish you're looking for, I mean, you can definitely get there. This one is definitely the one I'm most happy with. Um, I would say hardest to use because there is three components to mixing the all grip. You're going to have a, a brushing reducer, you're going to have thinner, uh, and then you're going to have your base as well. So you do need to pay attention to that mix ratio. It's a two to one to a 30% thin, uh, which we did using just one of our little mixing cups, but it, it adds to the complexity. You got to think about it. You do have to use a wipe down solvent with this one. Uh, we didn't use it in one of the steps and I regretted it instantly because we had surface contamination and it looks horrible, I had to redo it. So you, you have to follow the instructions to a T when you're using this paint. But if you do that and you're willing to do those steps, I mean the finish looks amazing. Uh, really good clarity in terms of the light. You could you know probably use this as a mirror if you needed to. Uh, wet sanded, waxed, looks beautiful. Definitely, I think this is going to be the paint that we use to repaint our other Chris Scott project boat. Um, but we'll follow the steps, you know, as we need to. Uh, but very, very nice color. Turned out really well. As long as you follow the instructions, you should be fine. Uh, but you are going to spend a lot more on this type of a paint than you would on the other. So I uh, kind of kind of decide your budget there as well. And the winner of our smooth paint challenge is Aldrin. Overall, I mean, all the companies make a great paint. Uh, they each have their strengths and weaknesses, so if you have any questions on this video or paint recommendations for your project, uh, either send us a message on YouTube, email the store, uh, and we'll get back to you right away.